I knew Eleanor Roosevelt as my grandmother. I didn't know she was really famous. I knew lots of people knew her, but I assumed a lot of people knew older people because they'd been around longer. And I had no idea that she was as famous as she was, but she was just my grandmother. Nina Roosevelt Gibson spent much of her childhood with Eleanor Roosevelt, who lived right next door. She was wonderful as a grandmother. She put us first. In Hyde Park, when dignitaries would come and visit, we would have a formal meal, dinner, whatever. After dinner, it didn't matter what the dignitary wanted to do. And that, this could be a king or queen of, of another country. Um, it didn't matter what they wanted to talk about. That was the time that if there were grandchildren present, which often there were, she would get out a book she'd been reading to us and read a few chapters before we all went off to bed. Others Eleanor put first were women and minorities. She championed for both through public policy and by her own example. I had one of the first black dolls and I loved it. But friends would come over and they'd be terrified of that doll and I couldn't understand why. It just never occurred to me. I, I, growing up with my grandmother, things like that just didn't occur to you because there were people of all colors there and they were all welcomed. Eleanor came from a family of leaders challenged by trying times. She, her husband and distant cousin, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and her uncle, President Teddy Roosevelt, as one family, touched more American lives than any family in history. Eleanor Roosevelt had been her husband's liberal conscience, always urging him to do what she saw as the right thing. During her last years, she served her country and her party in the same role. Over the next decade, she continued her work on behalf of civil rights, championing integration of the armed forces, applauding the integration of the schools, publicizing instances of discrimination, supporting the Freedom Riders, and ignoring the death threats that never stopped coming her way. Nina recalls that while Eleanor never showed it publicly, these battles took their toll. My grandmother used to go into the bathroom and turn on the faucet and have a cry and then turn off the faucet, wipe her face and come out and she was going forward. And she taught me to do the same thing when I was little. Nina grew up in one of the most famous families in America. Yet in some ways, her childhood was similar to that of many children of the era, especially at family meals with her uncles. And at dinner time, we heard a lot of conversations, many of which went right over our heads. My father at that time was the only Republican, and the others were still Democrats, so we had booming discussions between the brothers and my father at the dinner table, arguing back and forth. And as children, we picked up quite a bit of what they were saying. We didn't really understand it all, but um, we were never sort of pushed away from any kind of conversation. We rarely talked about FDR in the past. So when I was in college, I took a course on FDR and the New Deal. As a delegate to the United Nations and chairperson of the Human Rights Commission, Eleanor Roosevelt gave speeches throughout the world. At times, Nina accompanied her grandmother. On one especially enlightening trip to Isfahan, Iran, they came upon a beggar outside a hut by the side of the road. We stopped, as other visitors did, and we got out of the car and we went over and we were talking to the man, and, and we had interpreters. And my grandmother had not been introduced, but she said to him, 
we have brought you, we were going to have a picnic, and so we have brought you some picnic foods. Would you like them? And the man, suddenly tears came to his eyes, and he said, Mrs. Roosevelt. Now, nobody had told him her name, but he heard her voice, and he was blind, so he couldn't see her, but he knew that voice. That was the moment I realized that this woman had touched people in every corner of the earth and touched them with love. Eleanor had even touched Tucson, Arizona during two visits in the 1950s. Her experience then would foreshadow Nina's own journey here decades later. Just before we came, I was packing things um, to move to, to Arizona. And I have a lot of letters from my grandmother over the years, and I just happened to open one up, which I do that frequently, just to kind of reminisce or whatever, and, and it was a letter talking about staying at the Arizona Inn and going to the Desert Museum and how lovely it was and how much she really enjoyed Tucson. So I thought, oh good, I will enjoy Tucson as well. Eleanor Roosevelt passed away in 1962, shortly after celebrating her 78th birthday with a party for children only. <laughs>